Which is what you know, we leave. So we about jumped out of the booth. <laughs> like, what is happening? Right. Hello and welcome in. It's the Friday edition of Always College Football. I'm your host, Greg McElroy. So appreciate you being with us. Please like, rate, and subscribe. Wherever it is you're getting the podcast, whether it's on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or if you're here with us watching on the ESPN YouTube channel, it really means a lot. Hit us up in the comments. Please like, subscribe, help us out. Tell us where we can get better. That'll really help the show out as we move forward throughout this process. We have a great show lined up for you today. We'll visit with ESPN's Joe Tessitore. He's, of course, been on the call for so many great events. We'll ask him about his notorious Texas is back, folks, call that he had just a few years ago. And we also... We're going to dive into a little bit of the storylines that are coming out of the ACC Media Days. So, without much further ado, let's talk about it. When we talk about the ACC forever, I mean, so many people have declared this league to be a one-team league. It's no longer the case. We know exactly what happened last year. We know how well Pitt played, how well Wake Forest played. We know that NC State came to play, and we know that there's teams like Miami and North Carolina that feel like they're on the cusp of making significant strides. More on them in the days and weeks to come, I promise. We'll talk a lot about the ACC and break it down by division. Overall, we'll break it down. I promise you, we will give you that content. But just for today, just because we're dabbling in it, let's talk about the Clemson Tigers. Where are they right now? People are declaring the dynasty to be over. I don't know if I'd go that far, because if you look just last year, they had some challenges. They had injury trouble. They had problems along the defensive line because of those injuries. They had spotty quarterback play, partly because of injury. And if you look at Uyunglele, he had several issues throughout the course of the season. He had a knee injury. He had an index finger injury. As he released the football, the ball fluttered. He could barely command the football, and yet we're acting like he can't play. I remember just two years ago, the guy led a comeback against Boston College and then went on the road to North Carolina, or excuse me, to Notre Dame, and looked pretty dang good in the process. So those that are saying the DJ Uwe Ungle can't play, I, I don't know if I agree with that. I just think he was banged up last year, needed a fresh start. He's shed some weight and should be more mobile here this year to help lead what has traditionally been a very quarterback-driven offense. I said traditionally been. Why do I say that? Because I think this year it's going to be a run-based offense. I think this year they're going to lean on Will Shipley. And I think this year I would dabble and maybe put $100, $10, $5, $1 on Will Shipley to win the Heisman at 66-1. to Why? Because if you look at what this team became as the season went along, they began to lean heavily on the freshman running back out of Charlotte. He's not the biggest. He's not the fastest. He's not the most insanely athletic guy they've ever had. I still think that Travis Etienne, he checks all those boxes. But I do think you can make a case by season's end, he might be one of the most versatile backs they've had. What he can potentially do in the pass game, what he can potentially do as a, as a leading runner, rusher, I think what he can do is take the world by storm this year. Will Shipley's poised for a huge season. They leaned on him heavily down the stretch last year. I think they're going to lean on him heavily from start to finish this year. And as far as the defense is concerned, we referenced the injuries that they had to overcome. We already know that this defensive line, if it's not the best in college football, it's no worse than two or three. Across the board, they have insane talent. At the second level, they have great talent. And in the back end, because of how good the front seven is, they're very, very solid. So I think at all three levels, yes, they'll miss Brent Venables. He, of course, is a game-changing defensive coordinator. But everyone that I talk to seems to think that there won't be any drop-off because the culture is already in place. I think defensively they're going to be just fine. That's why I think Clemson, and I'm not going to necessarily do my, you know, hold my feet to the fire, etch it in stone, etch it in concrete. I'm not going to tell you my playoff teams right now. But I'm leaning a little bit in favor of the Clemson Tigers, not just bouncing back, but making a playoff run yet again. Sitting here with one of my best buddies. He's Joe Tess. He's my teammate. That makes me feel great. Joe Tessator, I guess. Thank Not you. everybody knows you as Joe Tess. I think, though, I should change my name because there are people who only know me as Tess or only call me Joe <laughs> Tess. So the rest of the name really doesn't matter. We work every Saturday together. We have a great time traveling the country, seeing a lot of your favorite schools, calling a lot of your favorite team's games. Uh, but we also get to see him on ABC's Holy Moly, in which he That's shares the booth. I get a little bit, well, I honestly get a little bit insecure. Why? 
because I feel like I'm, al- I'm loaning you out to yeah. someone that's far more high profile. And that's, maybe that's, un- that's disconcerting because you like come so far down back to earth when you come to our booth after leaving the booth so with Rob So you feel Riggle. when I go spend my time with Riggle doing yeah. silly shows on ABC that there's a self-esteem hit there with you? No, I just, I just know that you have to stoop to the bottom of the barrel once oh, you I leave see. I see. Riggle. Um, listen, I think you should come on Holy Moly or the dog show or any of these other silly things we do over there and we'll do a three man booth and everything will be good. Well, that'd be great. I would love to do that. Unfortunately, I don't think I would add any value to the broadcast. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, you're a funnier guy. That, I know you're a very serious, people know you're very serious. A dry. Football, you're not dry. You're a very funny guy, but you're so, you know, scholarly and you're the, you're uh-huh. the authority and mm. you're the former national championship winning quarterback that when the red light goes on in this arena, you're Greg Mackle. Yeah, well, it's, I appreciate you. Know, but you're a, fu- you're a funny, funny I would guy. be open to Rob Riggle coming and joining us on the broadcast. That would be great. That would be very good. Could Perhaps sideline analyst? No, seriously. Could you imagine, like, in an intense SEC game, knowing how the fans already are, if we've got him being a total jackass. Yes. Like, total jackass doing his stepbrother, Catalina wine mixer. Now, now or if he walks in good. with the taser, you know, from the hangover. Oh, the he cop, stole Vegas that cop. scene. Yeah. Oh, stole the... Killed the movie. Stole the Wait, movie. hang on. So you're saying that Riggle the was the MVP of the Hangover? The Taser, the Taser scene in the Hangover. It was up there. You know, sometimes the big boys need a second shot. You know, <laughs> it, the big ones. Yeah, you know, he's yeah. The other guys, the fight scene in the other guys. Yeah. Right? The New York cop. Is, yeah. yeah the, I haven't seen the other guys. Any good? Oh, it's, <laughs> is it? Bro. That's, I've kind of liked him part. as uh, the boat captain on the or, office. That, or the gym teacher in 21 Jump Street. That, that one was good. Yeah, one. Captain Jack. Yes, on, yeah, on, yeah, Captain Jack. Yeah. Yes, Captain Jack. All right. Uh, yeah. Needless to say, these are how our conversations go. Uh, oftentimes, they're over a sipper, oh. of either depending on the time Correct. of year, tequila or whiskey. But I, Tequila, really? Yeah, summertime. I'll try, I'll try it sometime. Yeah, you've heard of it? Yeah. It's a pretty good spot. <laughs> Um, all right, so look, a lot we want to get to. So much going on here at SEC Media Days as we're getting ready to put a bow on it. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you say this year compares to previous years since you've been to so many? Oh, it, it doesn't have the big controversy. It doesn't have the singular character who everybody has to get. So you don't have um, you don't have Manzel yeah. coming off of all that you know, getting kicked out of the Manning Passing Academy because he was drinking and then he showed up. What did you ask said, Manzel that one? Johnny, time. hang on, walk us through that. I'll be Johnny. <laughs> sure. All right, tell me exactly. Well, what you would have you to have fifteen hundred people right up against you while you're live on. That was before the SEC Network. That was Sports Center. That was Sports Center. That was Sports Center. What year was that? Uh, Two thousand third summer of thirteen. Okay, so he's one of the of biggest 13. stars in America. Yes, he gets he's going to the and he gets kicked out. But of the Manning are, passing but camp. Back then, you didn't realize what Johnny was, you know, up to that we now all know. Uh, looking back <laughs> at it, it makes more sense. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so at the time, it's Johnny Manziel got right. kicked. Out. What happened? Right. You know, and people don't realize the lifestyle. Yeah. And I, I turned to him and I said, um, "Johnny, uh, well, did you drink alcohol?" <laughs> no, it was not like that. It was like, Johnny, Johnny, did, did you, did you drink, drink alcohol? alcohol? It was not. It was yeah, not it was a, so, Did you drink was, any booze? <laughs> no, it was. Did you drink alcohol? <laughs> It was so ridiculous. What did he say? Because I had to do that. Like, yeah, I, you, I, naturally. I mean, I can't even remember. But like now, like you know, I see him afterwards. It was like, how ridiculous was that moment? Oh in my time? gosh, unbelievable! It was so crazy. And Feinbaum was going off on him just before he came to the set. He's standing right behind Feinbaum. <laughs> hey, <was>, Johnny! <laughs> <he's> absurd, <laughs> of just course. absurd. But you know, going back through the years of, I'm sorry about that. You know, when when Tim was an American spectacle, yeah. like those years of SEC Media Days, and then. When Spurrier was just irreverent and didn't care what he said. Is there a year that Spurrier really oh, stole the years. show? Yeah, there many years. Many years. Which one in particular? Is there one in particular, like one? Oh, he always had great, you know, ball busting moments of, you know, mostly aimed at Georgia. But it was, <laughs> it was always great. There, there wasn't one. But those were great years. And, you know, through recent years, there have been people. This year, I think, you know, Nick and the tide come in as with, still with that status, the Heisman yeah. Trophy winner and the all-time greatest coach to ever coach in sports. And then, um, but I don't feel like we have a lot of controversy. I don't feel like we have the singular spotlight on a character. And, um, but we have good football talk and that's welcome right now. I've been so happy this week to be up on the set for all these endless hours. I don't know if you feel this way, to finally be talking about football <laughs> and not talking as much about NIL and the landscape of college football. We're still doing some of that, yes. but 
I feel like we're digging in on rosters and predictions and previews and games. and That's what we do here. That's what we do here we on, like on ACF. Yes. We're not <laughs> always CFB or always college football. Let's not get carried away. I like always CFB. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm glad that you do. But I did, you know, to that point, and I will say this, and I hope that listeners and viewers feel this way uh, um, into week two of the podcast, is I think this podcast is really filling a hole, and it's something that's very necessary. And I think there are a few people and products um, in the sport that do that. But I think this is critically important to have something like this because I think the sport is grossly underserved yeah. compared to the scope and size and magnitude of the sport. Well, I, I don't, I mean, and honestly, the, the knock on college football was it was not always year round, right? As there was a, yeah. it was a seasonal sport. Like you got a lot, you got ramped up a little in spring and then things quieted down and you ramped up for fall right. and it quieted down. Then you ramped up for spring ball. Or excuse me for recruiting, and then it quieted down. Yeah, now with the transfer the, no, portal, it that's, never that's, stops. That's not the case anymore. And the appetite is different too yeah. now. There's a real appetite. It's the second most popular sport in America. It's the second biggest TV asset you can have in live event programming. Um, it's one of the few places where there are very few things we still have left in American media, American society, where you can put everybody under one tent. Yeah. Um, no matter of socioeconomics or demographic, football is that one thing, whether it's the NFL or college football. When you think about your experiences having done some of the biggest games yeah. ever, I mean, hey, we all know the Tess effect. It's been fun through the years. Yeah, the Tess effect. Yeah. It, Can I you mean, describe that's exactly what? I, Somebody came up with no, that. No, I want to know ago. what it is. Like, what is I the don't know. I, ca I caught a wave going back 12 years ago, maybe longer, where it just funny things happened when I was in the booth and people ran with it. So then people start looking for it. So then every overtime game. I, but, you know, the, years ago, there was like a few seasons where we were just, it was absurd. I mean, whether it was the Colin Kaepernick, Kellen Moore, Boise, Nevada, all time game. classic. It's a great game. Or, you know, four overtimes or the Penn State, Michigan, four overtimes or the, you know, and it just kept going and going and going and going of overtime games and classic finishes. And I think also, you know, my style on the spectrum of broadcasters, if I was to self assess, I think I am definitely on the side of the spectrum of engaged and passionate. And crazy. Crazy and a little bit, big. Yeah. And, you know, so, you know, I think Gus Johnson and Brent Musburger and even Keith Jackson, if you really think about him for his era, was a big bro. And I, that's the side I lean on, which marries up to college football very well. So when you get these bigger moments, um, perhaps, I don't want to say embellished, but they're amplified right. a little more, <laughs> right? Um, so, I have no idea. But what it's got nothing to do with about. me. So, right. You know, I just, you, <laughs> college football produces this, and I think my style. Um, fits college football fairly well. Right, so, I would I would. You know, that's why I like calling knockouts and why I like calling big college football games. Yeah. I, I like it all on the line. Yeah, you like, I like you it said if there's the not combat yeah, or, or right. violence, it's not a sport, Correct. something along Correct. the lines of yes. that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I like an ambulance close by. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. it's amazing. As somebody who was taken off a football field on an ambulance. Yeah, it's, we, we don't need to talk about your football career. There but was no good, football career. You were career, a good player. It? No, I was not a good player. Yeah, I have were. three reconstructive surgeries on my damn ankle because of the sport. Um, no, I think my son out, out distanced me in probably one year <laughs> of prep ball. You know, I was nothing. It was one um, of the cooler moments, though, being in the booth with you that that game. That and, was incredible. And we were sitting there. There's one probably yeah, uh, the incredible. top five moments. I probably I can the, say it now. I couldn't like it's taken me still some time to digest it. But, all right, so let's set the stage, okay? So Boston College. Joe is a Boston College graduate. Uh, you did graduate. I did. Graduate. Okay, just making sure. Joe is a Boston College graduate. His son, John, played punter yeah. at Boston College, but was the holder. Yeah. And in one of Boston College's biggest games ever, Clemson's Trevor Lawrence, the they're down in Clemson. Clemson's number one in the country. Yeah. It's a huge game. Trevor ABC. Lawrence tests COVID, yeah. tests positive for COVID. Before. DJ Uyungle is making his first start. You got the sense, like, all right, this game's going to be tight. Yeah. You just got that sense. And BC had, like, they were starting BC to, like, was good. Yeah, they, they were good. Yeah, they were Jerkovic, very, very solid. Dracovic was really He was starting CJ to figure and, it out. Yeah. Correct. And... There was a huge moment in the game, and yeah. you being the storyteller that you are, I'll let you set it up. Well, I mean, listen, I, I, you could tell just as well as I could because we were both shocked, but BC was up on them, yeah. and it was stunning. And It was just before halftime, and they had a pretty decent drive, but it was going to end up probably being a 40-something yard field goal. Right. It was fourth and four, fourth and five. And John, as you know, he played quarterback his whole life. Well, he's always been a kicker, kickoff specialist, punter, but he played quarterback, he played receiver, and... Um, and he's a pretty fast, athletic kid. And so Halfley 
had you know a lot of trick plays in for him, but you know, you're on the road at Clemson, number one right. team in the country, <laughs> like really. And you and I, I mean, we can honestly say when we reflect. Not even one sense. No, not even the. How not, about how about? Not even one sense. What was about to happen? No, and the broadcasters usually have a decent insight because you go to practice or you talk to people and you're like, all right, here's our trick plays. Keep an eye out for this. If you see this, no, yeah. something's up. And it's up. my son who's not. It's his son like, who you're very close with, by the way. It's not like you don't like. You're as close to him as you are of any <laughs> college football player right. at, for those years. By far closer with him than any college football right. player. Right. I mean, you not know him close. very, very well. Correct. You have an extremely close. So and he didn't hint out one thing. No, that he had a trick play on for the game against Clemson. Trick play. He goes under center, draws Clemson offside. Well, he split the. See what I because I wa I know the way he thinks as a football player. So I know where. Like I saw him look up. There was one moment where I said he. I in my head I go, is he? No, there's no way. And then, <laughs> but I know how his football IQ and his kind of football mentality. Yeah. And I know he looked at the a gap. And then he split out the tight end. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. yes <laughs> he I called, do. he right. he audibled, and he split out the tight end. Then he ran under center. And then the two of us, we just went, we, you know, we leaned so forward. We about <laughs> jumped out of the boot. Like, what is happening? Right. And it then was he, a good... he forced the safety, charging into that A gap, yes. and then nudged. Got him. Then he double hard, right. you know. Got him. Aaron Bumeri on for the 40 yard field goal attempt. As they split out, Danny Dalton's a fake. Tessa Torres under center on fourth and two, and he got him to come off sides. First the, head, down. the head bob was absurd it on was the hard count. The so offside, and then right on, boom, touchdown to C.J. Lewis. Yeah, like the next, next play. Next play, they, right, yeah. ran out to the field. You know. It was unbelievable. Um, but so to anyways. see your son make a play on the biggest possible stage on yeah. ABC against the number one team in the country on the road with the lead, fourth down, critical play, turns it into a touchdown. It was one of the more phenomenal things I've ever seen. I've never seen you. You couldn't even talk. Like, At halftime, I definitely could. It was, it was right before halftime. And we got through the play. And, um, well, you know what's interesting about that, Greg, is two weeks before that, they were playing number eight team in the country, UNC, on ABC. We did the game. And people don't remember this because it didn't get shown on TV. But there was a moment where I actually had a sense of, okay, what would I do if? Because when they played North Carolina, he brought the team out in a muddle formation. Do you remember that? I vaguely remember that. So they scored a touchdown, and Jackass John Tessator comes out and doesn't line them up in extra point. He lines them up in pods. Oh, that's right, yes. And then so he back split in. them that's out right. into pods, yes. and then he looks over the defense, but our director wasn't cutting it because he yeah. nah, just needs to take the cutaway shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they, the safety came back into the middle pod, or else yeah. he was going to direct, he was about to direct snap and run it in because he thought he had numbers. Right. So at that moment, I go, oh my God, I have to say his name. Oh my God, I have to, what am I going to do? What am I going <laughs> to do? Gonna... <laughs> so I, I did have that moment two weeks before where I said, what will I say if? He pulls off a trick play. Right. But then I put it away. I was like, of course. Oh. But I at that moment I was like, oh, just call him Tessator. Just don't even, yeah. don't even acknowledge. He's just Tessator. No one will make the connection. No one will. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything until you in that Clemson game had to. said something. Because I was just gonna go along with like no. just another player. Just yeah. right. no, I had to. I was like, we were both so blown away. It was yeah, unbelievable. But anyways, so it was a special a moment. And I was very happy to share it with you. Yeah. Um, that meant a lot to me that it shared it with you because. You're so close to our family. You're like an extended part of our family. Um, you had you had even when John was like named a captain at prep ball. You were with us at dinner, and you came up right. and spoke, and you, you know out to dinner that night. And, you know, so you're like a, a part of the family. So it was special. And my son, you know, had a totally average football career. Went on to play college played Division football. One football. He played Division One football. He's like. I mean, there aren't a lot, right? He was a Emmy guy. He was a lot, he was a recruited. Can right. understand that that is a massive deal. Yeah, I mean, no, massive. he was recruited to a lot of places and accomplished a lot at a certain level. But at that level, to accomplish what somebody like you accomplished is just a different stratosphere. So to have one special moment that we can forever share. Oh yeah. You know the kid. The kid w like got thrown into the mix as an 18-year-old place kicker. Had like 14 right. points as a freshman. Never place kicked again. Right. Was a punt backup punter and right, holder. Right. And, you know, it's all bullshit. Like, so to have one special moment <laughs> where, you know, it was really cool and to have right. that with you. No, it was it was awesome, man. I want to I want to talk about your favorite call of all time outside of that one because I had a feeling that's that my was, favorite call. Of all I had time. a feeling it would yeah, be. That's my favorite. Call um, of all time. But is there another call to you? Maybe even as a consumer of yeah, college football. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah. Because it's something that maybe people would think that there would be derision associated with it or there would be mockery. 
But I really, as the years go on, uh -huh. love Texas as Oh, that's folks. amazing. Yeah, that's no, funny I really that you do, because for, so, for a singular call to be the one thing attached to a blue blood power university for a decade. Swoops, dancing for the win! Texas is back, folks! For it to be like the thing that's always said, always used, it's become like a label yeah. when it comes in, until Texas actually gets to the college football playoff, you know, right. or wins their next championship forever. Texas is back, folks, is always going to be Velcro to them. Right. So, and I loved that game. I thought that was a wild and compelling game. And I liked, I liked the call the moment I made it, but I liked, I do like what has come of the call <laughs> because of, you know, the great irony of the call. Is Texas back, folks? Is Texas back, folks? You're going to find out on September 10th. Oh, there, yeah. there we go. All right, perfect. Uh, all right. I do, no, listen, I do think from a program trajectory standpoint, obviously just the last three weeks, four weeks now of recruiting, right. it's going to be very obvious that the blue chip ratio that we often cite is not going to be an issue. Sure. It's, no. They're going to be very, very high in that percentage list of upwards of 85 to 90%. No, there's no denying that. What about your favorite venue that... Most I have people, such an SEC bias but it's that. not. Take SEC out yeah. of it because it's a little bit of an unfair. If you take like some of the mis more historic venues, like I'll tell you mine, my favorite venue that I've been to that that wouldn't necessarily be at the top of anyone's list sure. was Boone, North Carolina, Appalachian State. Yeah, I State. can understand. Like can it was unbelievable. Like, like it yes. was one of the coolest spots to me. Sure. They had Miami coming to town as the biggest game in their history. Yeah, Kid the Brewer Stadium. Rocking. It was going absolutely berserk. Right. right. It was 9:30 in the morning Eastern. The game kicked at noon. Everyone in the stands is absolutely rowdy. Like crowd surfing in the student section, absurd. Now they got destroyed, but that was probably one of my favorite venues. Beyond that, it'd be probably Provo. For BYU, I've done many BYU phenomenal, games. It, it phenomenal, it really is, venue. and it's beautiful to look at. Oh my gosh, Off the scenery the is great. It, it's gorgeous. I mean, I think I've done. God, I don't know if there's like a place I haven't done a game through the years because my career started just all over the place doing right. any game, any day of the week, everywhere, every conference, and then um, uh, I yeah, I do like doing games at Texas. Texas is great. Yeah, yeah. I do like doing games there it's a lot. Because you like the food and, and I love in Austin, Texas too. I do like the. Yeah. I like the rest of that. <laughs> yes, trip I'm about a to lot. say that's a big, that's a good yeah, trip. For I you. like the. That, we took like a ridiculously long run, if I recall. Yeah, we in did. In Texas last yeah. year, or two years ago, I can't two remember when it was. Yeah, it's like a long one. We did like a half marathon, I that believe. That is hill country. Let me <laughs> just tell you, like that's really legitimately hill like we took an eight mile run up and down the hills. It was a long one. So quit evading the question. What's your favorite venue? Uh, you know, I've done a I've done a whiteout at Penn State. That was it. Yeah, I've done a whiteout at Penn State, and that's the whiteout specifically is very very special, um, and it's loud, and you feel it, um, and and that's that's great. So that's on the short list. I really struggle with all the superlative questions, the favorite best. I because, you don't keep a list. Well, yeah, because in my head, no matter what I said, like, oh, I forgot this and I forgot that. Right. Um, so that's that. Um, you know, when Boise was at the very top, those undefeated cool teams place. and in the place, when the Chris Peterson, Kellen Moore years, the, that, that place was fun. Um, Rose Bowl's been, you know, it's a cool place to, when you're in that historic booth. Yeah. That's fun. It doesn't have the Grab juice. Right. Yeah, it doesn't right. have the juice, but just the, the venue gives you a little something. Um, but those those would be the short. If you're telling me I can't pick SEC because my well, you can. I mean, well, you want me to pick SEC? I'll tell you, Kyle Field, I love LSU at night. I love every time I'm in Tuscaloosa when Florida's really good. A night game at the Swamp. Yeah, I love um, Auburn's always a great football weekend. Um, I mean, they're all, you can't miss. Yo, know, Williams Bryce when rocks. Oh, <laughs> but, you know, rocks. I mean, when we've had when they've been good through the years, you know, many of those years. That's that's been awesome. You know, I've caught a, a like I had an I've had Nebraska when you think they're back and when you think they're good in the places. I haven't been bucket list. Um, Nebraska, it's, 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 Iowa, Penn State are the three yeah, I've never done. I want to do I've them. Done so them. Bad. They're all great and they all are what you would think them to be. Um, you know, jump around at Wisconsin. Yeah, we did Wisconsin, it, yeah. but it was in Camp Randall. It was empty. Yeah, it was COVID. That, that was very disappointing. Yeah, because that was a really big game that under North, you know, to def to determine the division and 
in normal circumstances, we did it the COVID year um, where they had the restrictions, but you know, a late November with it all on the line for a division title there going into a fourth quarter, oh, that would be special. Is it cold it? too? Freezing cold. <laughs> I love it. Freezing cold. <laughs> I did an overtime Ohio State game there once that was outrageous. Um, and then there are places that are overrated where if I go through that list, the fan bases will yeah, we'll probably more avoid than that. This we like our than, goal. This is always good college. Football. No, our our goal is to celebrate college football, not Correct. just that's what we do. You know, poo poo college football. Yes, we want to celebrate. Yes, and you want to pull it down, but we want I, we're going to lift it up. I think celebrating the game is a very important thing. Yeah, I do. Yeah. We we're, that's that's our mission. That is, I think it's a good it's a good mission. Will you help us in that mission? I will help you. Will you, you're deputizing me. Yeah, but in if that you don't mind. Pause. Yeah. You'll be the sheriff of good celebratory college it would football, be and I'll be your deputy. Yeah, I'd be welcome. That would be nice. <laughs> I'd like that. Well, we look forward to seeing you uh, in the booth well, on you're Saturdays. You'll see me every single day for like the next seven to eight months. It'll be a lot. It's a lot of me. It'll be a lot. And for me, it's a lot of you. Yes. But, you know, I love you like a brother, and I'm very proud of you. And um, you make me feel old to see your it's incredible good, career growth in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell the story of you knocking on the door and, um, and wanting to put you into the Roll Tide War Eagle movie and, <laughs> and to see what you've become. And it's, it's uh, you know, the first time that I remember we really, you know, had a mic on you and, and said, wow, look yeah, at this guy. That, yeah, that's what you said. He's Rhodes Scholar <laughs> material with... Amazing looks and the gift of gab All and looks. the resume. It's it's yeah. very impressive. I'm glad that you feel that way. I feel that way. Someone see, someone seems to think my looks have helped me <laughs> in some way, clearly. <laughs> Joe, we appreciate it, man. I appreciate it's you, great Greg. To see you. It's great to see you. You want to say Texas is back into the camera one more time? Greg McElroy is back, folks. <laughs>